And now, it's time to talk about one of the biggest dangers that military aviators have to face on a day-to-day -day basis. Your aircraft is flying high in the skies. You're descending on your enemy in a steep dive. Now all it takes are a tight turn and a few well-placed shots. The enemy is in the palm of your hand. But suddenly, everything changes. The sky darkens, your field of vision gets narrower, and outside becomes a blur. Your hands are pulled down, your legs become heavy, and then you black out. This was a G-induced loss of consciousness, or a G-lock. Incidents like these caused fatal accidents as far back as World War I. What made it extra terrifying, though, was that the strange phenomenon was affecting people seemingly at random. A visibly fed person could fall unconscious just after one steep turn, while a person with an unimpressive physique somehow managed to do it for hours and hours. That's why the pilots combined forces with the best doctors to make sense of what was happening mid-flight. They had to find a way to endure high Gs, to stay conscious, to stay strong, and to conquer the skies. The reasons for the blackout didn't remain a mystery for very long. It turned out that the action of G-forces moves the blood away from the brain and into your legs and the abdominal region. Due to increased gravity, it's hard for your heart to pump the blood up into your upper body. As a result, the brain and the eyes are deprived of blood, which leads to darkening of vision and the loss of consciousness. Experiments show that a trained pilot can easily withstand the exposure to 4 to 5 Gs and even sustain, for a short period of time at least, up to 12 Gs. But 20 to 30 Gs will knock anybody out in just a second. Anything higher than that, or a prolonged exposure, will lead to permanent damage. But that's all about positive acceleration. What about negative G-forces? When the blood rushes to your brain, minus 3 to 4 Gs is enough to burst blood vessels in your eyes and brain, which can lead to blindness or permanent brain damage. G-lock continues to be a problem even today, but early efforts to combat this phenomenon were undertaken in 1930s. This early research led to the invention of early variants of G-suits, or more accurately, anti-G-suits. An Australian inventor and physiologist who went by the name of Frank Cotton came up with an interesting solution. He designed a special set of gas-operated, tightly-fitting trousers that the pilots had to wear. Every time G-forces increased during flying, the sacs within the trousers automatically inflated and pressed firmly on the abdomen and legs, thus not letting the blood of the pilot be forced into his legs. Of course, such a system was a primitive one. After years of research, the bright minds of the world started to design more advanced G-suits, including full-body G-protection systems. It is worth noting that by the end of World War II, G-suits were already pretty common. With the start of the turbojet era, they became a must. You have to understand, though, that this garment is not a universal remedy. It just helps pilots sustain higher G longer without excessive physical fatigue. And even though we're constantly getting better at understanding the high G strain and compensating for it, a strong, healthy heart and overall physical fitness are still a vital requirement for anyone who wants to be a pilot of a fighter aircraft. <laughs> 